Doctors of Reddit, what was the most overdramatic or underdramatic patient you ever had? I think we have all seen our share of overdramatic patients or heard the tales, so I'll go with the less common underdramatic patient. Patient presented to the trauma with an 18 inch machete blade firmly implanted across the top of his skull. He was driven to the hospital by a friend, possible assailant slash owner of said machete, ambulated on his own into the air, had totally normal vital signs in Tridge, a slight steady trickle of blood from the wound, denied pain and was in no apparent distress. Due to a mass trauma event, the air was insanely busy, so it took us a while to get him a bed. In the meantime, he calmly sat in the waiting area nearest to the Tridge station so we could keep an eye on him and watched TV. As staff were running around like crazy, phones ringing non-stop, patients bitching about the wait time to be seen and exhibiting other types of tomfoolery. Machete man just sat there tranquilly exhibiting his true zen mastery of machete head wounds. All these years later, I can still see him with that machete lodged in his skull. He had an uncomplicated treatment course and suffered no impairment from the injury. He was cooperative and nice to all his caregivers. He also profusely thanked us for caring for him. Probably one of the few that did that night. 60 to 70 year old lady arrives at trauma -er. She was being chased by a cow, running for her life, and fell off a fucking 2 meter cliff. She had several fractures, but only really complained about her leg, and tried to get up, and walk away several times telling us she was fine. Initially we thought she had some head trauma, and was completely disoriented, but it turns out she was just that stubborn. She was hospitalized for a while, and had a good recovery. I do wonder if the cow fell of the cliff as well lol. We were doing paternity testing for an apparently extremely acrimonious case of, your son impregnated my daughter, no he didn't, your daughter sleeps with lots of other boys. Each side sent a lawyer to the appointment. Each lawyer had their phone out recording and followed the blood and cheek swabs from collection through the lab for DNA extraction, performing the test in our PCR room and watching me analyze the data files which is exactly as boring as it sounds. It's like dude, we're the neutral third party lab here. We have literally zero interest in the outcome of the case. You don't need to be so dramatic. All the chain of custody stuff is documented. We have a second observer signing off on sample IDs. We are not going to risk lose a license by accepting a bribe from either set of parents. Young trauma patient around 17 yot boned by a garbage truck. Moving him onto the court table he said, bow, and silent tears came down his face. Then he apologized for complaining and thanked us profusely. Turns out he had a few broken vertebrae, broke half his ribs, and had a fractured hip and clavicle. Kid whimpered a few times during the CTs, and again apologized when we came back in. Like dude, you could scream in my face and I'd understand. Not a doctor, my dad's story, old guy that needed a pacemaker, worked a farm in Utah, I think. He realized at some point that when he started having an episode he could just grab the electric fence and it would stop. So this badass just ran fencing everywhere he could on his property and grab the fence if he had an issue. Been doing this for months if not years. Thanked my dad for putting in the device saying how he can finally get out to areas of his property that he couldn't run fence to. Not doctor but EMT. Had my fair share of overdramatics, though I would say most of them suffered from some sort of mental impairment or dementia. Most were manageable, but I do remember this one woman that we had to take to dialysis on a regular basis. It was always hell from the moment we walked into her nursing home room. Who are you? What are you doing to me? Help in being kidnapped. They're going to rape me, etc. I'm pretty patient. The first maybe 5 or so times we ran her we were very slow and gentle with her. I would explain multiple times to her who we were, what we were doing, showed her our ads, and so on. But the screaming and yelling and flailing would continue. One day we picked her up from the dialysis center and they told us that she was absolutely not welcome back unless the nursing home started highly medicating her. See, not everyone that goes to dialysis is old and feeble. A lot of younger folks come in on their own power. 
and they told us that nearly a dozen clients had stopped coming in and switched centers due to her outbursts. In the USA healthcare is a business. Most under dramatic was the gentleman that we were taking from an to a specialty trauma center. He had been in a bar and witnessed a bar fight. He tried to break it up. One of the guys smashed a beer bottle over his head. Spoiler, it's not like on TV. The beer bottle was hard enough to break his skull, but it also broke the beer bottle. The way the impact hit it partially popped his eyeball out of the socket. Then the broken beer bottle traveled down his face and sliced the eyeball in half. Very few injuries bothered me that I saw as an EMT, but the second I saw his face my eyes just started watering. But he was the calmest, most polite Mexican gentleman. Only spoke a little English but everything was, si senor, or something of equal politeness. Didn't utter a single complaint. My stepson broke his leg on a jump while skiing. He put his skis back on and came down the mountain. He told his dad he had fallen pretty hard but wasn't in much pain. The next day he said his leg was clicking when he walked. Sure enough he had fractured both bones in the lower leg. There was a guy who attempted suicide by firing an ale gun into his ear. I took care of him in the IQ and he remembers everything. He'd been depressed a long time and decided to end it. Mailed himself, sat around a while, before deciding he didn't want to die, drove himself to the air, walked inside and fainted. It was so weird how stoic he was about it all. Not a doctor was in a mobile aid station, and one of our guys caught a bullet in the ass during a live fire exercise he just laid there calmly as we got vitals to hand him off to the ambulance Al only thing he requested was a blanked because he was cold and all the officers were shitting themselves because someone got shot during training at night. I was shitting myself because I was on radio guard when it happened and my NCO was gonna fuck me up because he thought I was asleep they admitted to not calling to let us know. I'm a nurse, and we had a patient recently who was palliative, expected to die naturally. His body functions were only at about 10%, he wasn't eating or drinking, and he wasn't peeing or defecating anymore. He just laid in bed with his eyes closed breathing. When people get to this point usually the only care we provide is for comfort versus sparing life. So we don't give people food or water, because they are usually unconscious and more likely to choke and be harmed. This patient's daughter was some big shot lawyer from the US, and when she saw that we weren't feeding her dad she started recording everything we did, and said to her, and then phoned the police. I remember a police officer coming to the unit, asking to speak to me, the most responsible nurse at the time, and asking me why I was withholding food. I explained to the officer that I had physician's orders to withhold food and that the patient was at a severe aspiration risk. The police officer was like, cool, case closed, and left. The daughter was unfortunately banged from the hospital premises by management for interfering with patient care. Not a doctor, personal story. Broke my wrist when I was 6 almost 7 was running the pacer test in elementary school. My shoe became untied in the 8th round. If I stopped to tie my shoe, they would've counted me as out. Tenth round comes along, and that awful beep goes off, and I booked it to the end. Stepped on my shoelace and tripped. I tried to break my fall with my left hand, and it folded underneath my body, and I heard a very disgusting and loud crack. My wrist broke in three places I cried on the way to the nurse's office, and then fell asleep in the car, right to the hospital. When the doctors had to break my wrist back into place, I only had a single tear. Barely whimpered. Meanwhile, a grown ass man, probably 40 ish, had to get a shot, because he got bit by a bug, and he had an allergic reaction. You could hear him screaming at the top of his lungs, because of the shot. It was hilarious. The doctors couldn't stop laughing, my dad was losing it, while his kid was getting their wrist out back into place and this 40 year old dude is losing his shit over having to get a shot for the severe allergic reaction he was having. My mum was called in, to help with an emergency. Went to the ward, where a girl was sat up in bed, conscious, quite calm and talking freely to medics. Mum realized as she got closer, that the girl had argued slash broken up with her chef boyfriend who had sunk a 12 inch carving knife into her stomach. 
the girl was just sat in bed chatting with a towel wrapped around the knife stuck in her belly. My mum couldn't believe it. Never remove a knife from a stab wound, or you might bleed to death. Also don't piss off chefs. Not sure how fitting this is, but my mom one has to give under for a surgery with her ankle. She was in pain the whole way to the hospital, but when she saw the nurse coming with the fourth she suddenly shifted from pain to saying, oh hell no, you are not doing that, go get me someone else, I guess she had this nurse before, and did not like how she put fourths in or anything sharp. She refused to let her do anything involving pointy objects during her stay. Not patient, but a doctor, I got a really weird allergic reaction a couple years ago, to the point all my skin started peeling off, like from sunburns, I got an appointment with this supposed, great, dermatologist, and as DHE looked through my tests results, she had the nerve to say, everything is perfectly fine, after which I shake my head, and cover his desk with skin pieces, lol, went from calm to freaking out in less than a seconds. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to consider the idea to maybe think about potentially subscribing. Peace.